Hello everyone, my name is Mikaeda Valletta, also known as the Body Scientist and the Queen Lioness. And um, I am here today to talk to you about skin, okay? How you can improve your skin, the look of your skin, the feel of your skin, your complexion, okay? And also what um, our skin can tell us, okay? So, a lot of people are not aware of the fact that our skin is um, our largest organ, okay? It is our largest organ. It is also part of our immune system because um, our skin is like that barrier between what gets to come inside of our body from the outside world, okay? So our skin is permeable, but our skin is permeable to certain things. A lot of people are unaware of the fact that we absorb things into our bloodstream much easier through our skin than we do through consuming it orally and digesting it, okay? So this is the reason why if you cannot put something on your, if you cannot consume something, then you should not be putting it on your skin. So all the commercial lotions and soaps, the Dove and the Jergens and Oil of Olay, uh, Proactive, whatever it is you're putting on your skin to attempt to make it clearer, softer, more radiant, wrinkle-free, all of that, if you ate that stuff, it would poison you you would have to call the poison control center okay so that says something that's very very important okay um now our skin is mostly protein and fat uh... protein needs fat in order to be supple this is the reason why you put fat on your you put oil on your um, leather jacket or your leather boots or on uh... a, a drum head Okay, anybody that drums animal skins, you have to oil it sometimes, okay? That helps to keep the skin, the protein, supple. Okay, so it is important to moisturize your skin. A lot of people, uh, a lot of men especially that I know that will take showers and just get out and never put anything on their skin, I don't know how they can stand it because me personally, I hate my skin being dry. It makes you feel all cracky and stuff and, and your skin also ages much faster when you don't moisturize it, okay? It wrinkles and it ages much faster. So keeping your skin well lubricated and well hydrated also um, helps to keep your skin intact and from aging and, and more flexible, okay? But anyhow, um, water dries your skin out. That's why if you put water on leather, it changes it and dries it out. Now, um, so this is the reason why putting a fat on your skin when you get out of the bath, out of the shower, helps make your skin more soft and moisturized and not all dried out. Isn't it interesting how water can dehydrate us, okay? Water can dehydrate us. So, it dehydrates your skin and dries it out. This is the reason why people also bathe in milk baths and use soaps like goat's milk soap or soaps that have coconut oil or olive oil or shea butter or palm oil um, in it because all those things are fats, specifically saturated fats, which really help your skin be more supple um, and moist. All right. Um, also, putting some type of fat on your skin helps um, your skin from drying out in the winter for those people who live in cities where there's a winter months. Um, but in the summer, it also protects your skin from the damaging effects, the oxidizing effects of UV rate of the UV rays. You don't want to block the UV rays, whether you're white or black, um, brown or white or any shade in between. You do not want to put sunscreen on your skin because if you look up all the ingredients in sunscreen, if you go to the drugstore, buy sunscreen, or look at any of the bottles of sunscreen, and you look at the ingredients, Google them, look them up, you will find that all of the ingredients in sunscreen are cancer-causing and it blocks the UV rays. Now, we need the UV rays, specifically one of them. There's UVA and UVB, and I should know off the top of my head which one is which. One of them is the one that is responsible for the chemical reaction that creates vitamin D. Yes, we get vitamin D from the sun, but it's the UV rays specifically that hits an ergosterol. Sterol, cholesterol-like compound, on our skin that then produces vitamin D, and vitamin D is, is very much like a hormone, really. 
and we need cholesterol in order to produce vitamin D. Vitamin D is also fat soluble. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble. So they, they also need fat in order to be uptaken by the digestive tract or uptaken by the skin. Okay. Um, so when you use commercial sunscreen, it blocks the UV ray that is necessary for that um, production of vitamin D. And it can cause a chronic vitamin D deficiency. Um, and it allows another UV ray to penetrate deeper than it normally would, and which is why, um, which is linked to causing, linked to some cancer, I mean skin cancer. And if you look at the epidemiological statistics, you'll see that the more people consume, I mean the more people use commercial sunscreen, the more skin cancer increased. Like skin cancer has like go, increased like 350% in the past 25, 30 years, okay? So, um, but the darker your skin is, because like the, the, the RDA for vitamin D, the RDAs in general, the registered dietary uh, allowance, which you find in the back of foods, like, oh, it has 10% calcium or 5% vitamin A. That, those percentages are based on the RDA, which is something that these numbers that they came up with, based on researching a few people, all of whom of which were white men, and then they apply that to everyone. So they'll tell you, oh, you only need 20 minutes of vitamin D um, a day to get your, I mean, I'm sorry, 20 minutes of sun a day to get your vitamin D. Um, that's what I was told when I was in graduate school. And that's what I was told when I was in college. But then when I would look at the studies that show where they got those numbers from, it was white men that they were researching. Now, how much sun you need depends on where you live on the planet and how dark your skin is. The darker your skin is, the more sun you need to get vitamin D. Enough, um, yeah, to get enough vitamin D, to produce enough vitamin D. Now, if you live in um, Canada or you live in Northern Cali or you live in Michigan, you live in Chicago, you live in New York, you live in Philly, D.C., any of these places where and there's a winter time, we walked around, you know, we walk around covered up and the sun in the winter is different than the sun in the summer. It's not really the sun that we need. It's not the same type of UV rays we need in order to produce um, vitamin D. So a lot of people... Um, in, in, in blood studies show when they do blood tests of dark skinned people, okay, or brown people who live in the north, there's a hundred percent vitamin D deficiency in the wintertime. And oftentimes in the summer too, because in the summertime, in order to produce enough vitamin D, you need to have a lot of your skin exposed to the sun. And not through not through a glass, not like driving around in your car and the sun's coming through the window. Or you're sitting in your office and the sun's coming through the window. Once the sun comes through that glass, it changes it. Um, it changes the physics of it, so it does not. It won't produce vitamin D. So you need to have unfiltered sun on your skin. So if you're walking around in a business suit, or you know you are in a religion where you have to wear a lot of clothes, you're not going to produce enough vitamin D either. Um, so the outside of the sun, the only other source of vitamin D is the um, liver oils from cold water fish like cod liver oil, skate liver oil, stuff like that. There's some vitamin D in raw milk, raw grass-fed milk and raw grass-fed butter, but mostly in those liver oils. There are no plant sources of vitamin D, and again, you need fat, all right? Now, it's good to have them when you use something like coconut oil or shea butter, um, and you put that on your skin, the fats in it, those are both saturated fats, by the way, and so they actually protect your skin like I said, in the summer, and because um, they have antioxidants in it. And the antioxidants, they bind to the oxidizers. So what I was saying is that, um, yeah, the antioxidants, well, when a chemical reaction takes place, so when the UV rays hit your skin and um, convert the ergosterol into vitamin D, that is an oxidative reaction. Like in metabolism, when something, re um, when something converts, there's oxidation. There's always oxidation. So... Oxidation produces free radicals, and free radicals are unstable molecules that um, are throw a lot of other molecules out of balance when, because it's trying to make, to get balance, and so it causes destruction. Free radicals, okay? Um, antioxidants bind to free radicals in order to um, it, it binds to them, which deactivates them. Okay, so if we put antioxidants on your skin and you have a diet rich in antioxidants, then your blood and your skin has the antioxidants to prevent from sun damage. Now, if you're a light-skinned person, um, okay, there's a few things I want to explain. If you're a light-skinned person, um, 
yes, you're limited to how long you can be in the sun because, I was just talking about how darker skinned people have a chronic vitamin D deficiency in the winter. Even lighter skinned people often have a chronic vitamin D deficiency. That's the reason why the Eskimos consume a lot of raw salmon, okay? And, and blubber and stuff like that, um, seal blubber and stuff. But anyhow, um, the sun also can destroy folate. So if you get too much sun, it can destroy the folate in your body, which is a B vitamin that's necessary for cellular reproduction, okay? So whenever your cells are reproducing, your DNA, um, the, the folate is responsible for the correct transcription of your DNA. So if your folate levels are low, then you can your, your, your cells mutate, and it can cause a lot of issues, okay, with DNA, genetic issues. Now, so when people burn, that is a protective mechanism um, against genetic damage. So if you, somebody from Ireland goes to Jamaica, no, they can't be in the sun a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, it may be 15 minutes and they're going to get burned. For them to go put on sunscreen to, because they want to be in the sun longer, so it creates this illusion that, oh, I, now I can be in the sun for an hour and a half, or whatever, however that sunscreen thing works, they think they can be in the sun longer. Now they get the sun is penetrating their you know the sun is penetrating their skin for a lot longer time period than nature intended, and so now you get now you not only are you putting cancer causing chemicals in your skin, but you are now allowing yourself to be exposed to the sun way longer than you're supposed to. Our body speaks to us, okay? There's a reason why these things happen. It sucks, but it is what it is, okay? You can't trick nature. That shit backfires on you. And a lot of times, that's where cancer comes from. Cancer either is coming from some, like, deep, unreleased pain or emotion that people are holding on to in different parts of their body, and or doing something to try to trick nature, okay? I don't care what part of the body it is, okay? You're taking, someone could be taking birth control pills, and... You're trying to trick nature, and it causes this problem. Okay, so this is very important. Um, now, the other thing is when you when you have really bad skin, outbreaks and and pimples and rashes and e eczema, any type of skin issues is always coming from your gut. Okay, it's always coming from your gut. An imbalance. I have a video called "Preventing Intestinal Dysbiosis." Please. Um, Look up that video because I get into depth about it. But it is a clear sign of imbalance of bacteria in your gut, consuming the wrong type of oils. I have videos all about fat. I have videos where I talk a lot about fat, but consuming the wrong kinds of oils, like a lot of canola oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, hydrogenated oils, all those rancid, toxic vegetable oils, okay? And I'm sure consuming too much sugar. The sugar feeds the bad bacteria in your gut and helps to create that imbalance. But it's always coming from the gut and what you're putting on your skin. So one of the most important things about beautiful skin is the fat that is going inside of your body that you're consuming and the fat that you're putting on the outside of your body. Okay, this is very important. Um, and there are some some skin... Well, my favorite thing to use in my skin is shea butter, raw shea butter. I've been using only raw shea butter for the past nine years, and I, the stretch marks that I had on my hips are basically gone. You can't really see them. It helps to really even your skin tone. I think shea butter is the best for evening your skin tone. Coconut oil, extra virgin cold pressed coconut oil is what I use in the winter time. I mean, the summertime when it's just too hot for shea butter. Or when I'm doing a photo shoot, because a lot of times photographers want to give you baby oil, which is horrible for your skin. Baby oil and Vaseline should never be in your skin. Baby oil is mineral oil. Mineral oil is the worst possible oil that you could put on your skin, so never do that. Okay, Vaseline as well. And um, I'm going to do a part two of this video because I've been talking now for 15 minutes, and my computer is about to die. Okay, so my computer is about to die, and I don't edit videos and stuff like that. So this is going to be part one, and look out for part two. But in the meantime, your assignment is to go back and look at my videos, Prevention of Intestinal Dysbiosis and all about that. And please find me on Facebook, Twitter, my blog, um, the info is below, okay? So wait for part two. Bye guys.